Hi kids, I'm Joe. Hi, and I'm Jennifer, and welcome to another day here at ICC Kids. I am so excited to continue hearing about determination. What is determination? Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. Can you all say that with me? Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. Anytime you feel stuck, you can have determination to get unstuck. But that's not always easy. With God, we can ask Him to give us the strength we need to keep going no matter what. Hey, Ms. Jennifer, so now it's time to worship. So guys, count down with us. Three, two, one. Hit it, DJ! DJ.
All right, ICC kids, are we ready for our values? Okay, number one, love God. We love God because God is love and he first loved us. Number two, love people. We love people because God loves all people. Number three, have fun. We have fun because God gives us joy. And number four, make a difference. We make a difference because Jesus did. In the book of Acts, we've been checking out what happened to Jesus when he went to heaven and the growth of the early church. The church grew so much into the thousands, but some of the people needed special care. They were unable to provide food for themselves and they needed help. Boys and girls, what do you think the other believers did about that? That's right, the believers helped them just like we would do now. So the apostles, those who have been with Jesus while he was here on earth, made a plan. They chose seven wise people who listened and followed God's Holy Spirit. Their job was to make sure that everyone had what they needed. Now one of those seven people was Stephen. And now Stephen was a good guy. Well, wouldn't you think that God would put really good people to take care of those that loved him and followed him? Of course he would. Now, what we know about Stephen is that when someone needed something, everybody would think of Stephen because he was willing to help people. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapters six and seven. Stephen was the kind of guy you'd like to have as a friend, somebody you could count on. He could tell epic true stories. So then an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush, and he heard the Lord say, I am the God of your fathers. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Stephen was always ready to lend a hand. Hey, let me carry that for you. Or offer a word of encouragement. I know this is tough, but you've got God's spirit to help. In fact, when people needed help, everybody thought of Stephen. See, the new church was growing quickly and there were people who needed food and special care. So Peter and the apostles came up with a plan. It wouldn't be right for us to give up teaching God's word to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven of your men. They must be known as men who are wise and full of the Holy Spirit. We will turn this important work over to them. Pick Stephen. He rescued my kitten from that tall sycamore tree. He helped my family while I was sick and couldn't work in the fields. Stephen, you're in. So Stephen and six other men were chosen to help care for the new believers. God filled Stephen with special grace and power to help him do this work. Wowzers. You can see that Jesus is with him. But not everyone was impressed. Rather than choosing to be joyful at the work God was doing through Stephen, there were some people that began to argue with him. No one does something for nothing. What's in all this goody-goody act for you? My friend, Jesus said the most important thing is to love God and love others. That's all I'm doing. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Stephen had a wise answer for every question. At last, his enemies resorted to telling lies about him. I heard Stephen speak evil things against Moses and against God. This stirred up the religious leaders. They arrested Stephen and brought him before their gathering, the Sanhedrin. I haven't done anything wrong. This fella, he speaks against the law. I heard him say that Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this plague. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says Jesus will change the practices that Moses gave to us. Everyone looked straight at Stephen, even the high priest Caiaphas. He doesn't seem upset. His face, it's like, like an angel's. 
<clears throat> Is what these people are saying true? Stephen looked up at the angry, accusing faces surrounding him. He knew these people could do anything they wanted, even kill him, but he also knew that no matter what, God was still with him. Brothers and fathers, listen to me. Stephen wanted these leaders to understand that Jesus was no small town rebel. No, Jesus was the fulfillment of a plan that God had set in motion with Abraham so long ago. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham. Leave your country and your people, God said. Go to the land I will show you. Stephen continued the story of God's people through Jacob and Joseph and slavery in Egypt. The religious leaders listened, transfixed, as Stephen reminded them of God's work through Moses to free the Israelites and lead them to the promised land. He spoke of David and Solomon and the building of the temple. And then he took a deep breath and came to the heart of the story. You stubborn people, you won't listen. You are just like your people of long ago. Was there ever a prophet your people didn't try to hurt? And now you have handed God's promised one, Jesus, over to his enemies. You have killed him. I can't get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. How dare you? Stephen, filled with God's spirit, stood his ground. As he looked up, God gave him a vision of heaven. I see heaven open. Jesus is standing at God's right hand. The religious leaders were so enraged, they shoved their hands over their ears and yelled so they couldn't hear another word. They rushed at Stephen. I'm telling you the truth. Rough hands grabbed Stephen and hauled him out onto the dusty stone road. A young man named Saul watched, fascinated, as the religious leaders brought Stephen outside the city walls under the scorching sun. Here, let me take care of your coats. Still filled with rage, the religious leaders left their coats with Saul. Then they began throwing stones at Stephen. And even through all this, Stephen's last words were filled with love. Lord, don't hold this sin against them. Jesus had told his followers to live out his love everywhere. And through God's power, Stephen continued to share God's love to his very last breath. What happened to Stephen was terrible and very sad. Maybe it wasn't how you thought the story was going to go. But this isn't where the story ends. Remember, God sent Stephen a vision. Stephen knew when he died, he would be with Jesus in heaven. Sometimes we all go through a difficult time. And as we know, we don't have to go through that hard time all alone. Maybe one of your friends is upset at you or your parents are arguing a lot. Maybe someone's just being mean to you. Whatever trouble comes your way, you know that you don't have to go through it by yourself. You can always talk to God. Now, if you don't want to do that by yourself or don't feel comfortable, then ask an adult that you trust for help. And together through prayer, God will listen. We don't have to stay stuck. We can get unstuck with determination. And we have determination because we have God. And we might not know how every situation is going to work out, but He does. So trust God. That reminds me of our bottom line. Keep going because God knows the end of the story. Will you say that with me, boys and girls? Keep going because God knows the end of the story. Let's welcome our friend Samantha to share with us what the memory verse is. Let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. Galatians 6, 9. Thank you, Samantha. You did great on the memory verse. We are so proud of you here at ICC Kids. Now, everybody, you might be wondering, what do I need to do to get this kind of determination? Well, the reality is that all these believers, what they had was the Holy Spirit. 
and we receive the Holy Spirit when we put our trust in Jesus. So today I want to invite you to put your trust in Jesus too. He is the Son of God and He came to save us. So if you would like to accept Him as your Lord, as your Savior, join me in prayer today. Let's get our hands together and bow our heads. Dear God, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I believe in him, that he is your son, and that he paid the price for every time that I was bad when I did sinful things. Today, I ask forgiveness, and I repent. I turn around, and I ask you to just come and change my life, for you to come and be the Lord of my life and to save me to give me that whole new life the way you did to those believers those those many years ago so that i may be changed and be, may be new and i promise that i will try my best to follow you all the days of my life and i thank you in the name of your son jesus amen now for those of you that prayed that prayer today guess what there is a big celebration in heaven because you have been made new you received god into your heart and now you are part of his great big family hooray that is so so great so we want to go ahead and close out our service in prayer today and once again we thank you god we want to ask you to give us that kind of determination that you gave to your disciples that you gave to Stephen because you know the big picture and we don't. So give us that peace whenever we feel troubled to be able to keep going no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kids. Now, don't forget to check out iccenter.org for some more fun resources. And don't forget to send in your memory verse at iccenter.org at iccenter.org.